Alright, hello everyone. Um, it's Joseph and Eli again. Uh, we want to thank you very much for watching our, our last video. And um, today we're going to be talking about starting with our arm when we attack and learning how to do that using our fingers. So, a lot of people when they're hitting, they just do that. You see a lot of kids see, he's driving not really through using palm. their thumb. And look, even though I'm not using my thumb, I can still press forward. But this is wrong because I'm not really controlling how I'm hitting, I'm just punching. So we don't want to do that. We want to let go with this finger and our pinky so we can really control the exact spot we're hitting. Okay? If I want to change the angle, that's fine. And to practice those different angles, you could even think, let's put our tip right in the middle and let's do a circle from our wrist using our fingers to control exactly where the tip is. So I'm so, keeping the tip in the same spot. Yeah, so it's kind of like one of those videos with a chicken and the chicken's keeping its head still. That chicken head is your tip. See if you can move your hand without moving the tip. Because that means that you're controlling the tip. Okay. Next, you could do the opposite. You could do big circles, little circles. We like to think of fencing as basically using your blade as a different cone. So you could practice those cones. Little, from the wrist, from the elbow, and from the shoulder. And when you combine all these different cones, you can actually get some really interesting angles for how you hit and some really interesting parries, like parry two, cream, and you get a lot of really interesting stuff. Okay, now, this is one of the most common mistakes, well, not exactly mistakes, but one of the most common things that we see in fencing that we're not huge fans of. Since little kids have the trouble of really throwing their hand out, a lot of coaches say this, extend your arm and lunge. Now this looks pretty because I'm upright, I look like I'm in a textbook lunge, but in a real match, if I do this, my opponent isn't gonna let me just fall into them. I'm gonna actually have to explode to hit them. So I recommend when you guys are doing target, really focus on your arm going out first. So you should hit before your foot touches the ground. And you'll see even a lot of high level fencers don't really do this correctly because they're used to one, two. In epee, this makes sense, because sometimes you want to breach a parry anyway, you don't really care about right of way. So, so you might practice through. this as a different action, okay? But you need to be able to be in control of whether or not you're hitting like this, if you're going a little farther, so you extend and you're focusing on pushing with the back leg to hit the target, or if you actually want to reach with the arm, or with the back leg. So depending on your distance, depending on the type of lunge you want to do, so shotgun or sniper with the lean, then you can decide which one you want. Alright, anyway, now we're going to start with why we attack with our point first. So the tip of our blade is coming forward before anything else. So I'm going to give you a second to pause, we kind of covered this in the last video, but why do you think that's so important? Alright, you're probably unpaused by now, but the reason it's so important is that we keep ourselves safe. It does a lot of things for us, but our main advantage with starting with the tip is that it keeps us safe. If my brother blocks, now I'm still far away enough to where if he attacks me, I can get back and stay in control of the action. The other thing it lets us do is it serves as a measuring stick. If he starts running away right now, okay, instead of just doing something stupid like running after him, now I can see that he's ran away, I can start transitioning to other things, wait for that moment again. Finally, it lets us watch what our partner is doing. By starting slow with our tip first, we can then get a really nice disengage, and that's, that's very important. Now, a quick note on that. So, we say watching what the opponent is doing, but what we really mean is it lets us choose what our opponent is doing. So, if we're fencing, and if I present my blade on this side, so I can basically decide which way he's going to block. So he's gonna block that. Obviously, if my, if my blade is down here, and he goes the same way as my blade, it's gonna be easy. But if he goes opposite my blade, now I really have to work for it. He can choose which way I'm gonna parry. Yeah, so, blade back up. So if I were to do the same thing, let's say he's keeping his blade a little bit closer to the middle, like this. And I were to choose to show on this side, he's probably gonna parry six now. So I could go around. So one of the things, one of the questions we were getting a lot, not just from our students, but from people online is, should you know in advance what disengage you're gonna do? In my opinion, you should. If you've been fencing someone, maybe it's the first time you fence them, maybe the first time you do a fake lunge, you find out what their parry is. Next time, even if your eyes are closed, you should be able to go around. 
okay? If you have that kind of commitment, they will never be able to find your blade. They won't be able to block you. On the other hand, if you are watching, like I suggested earlier, it's a lot more likely the opponent can confuse you, because you don't know what you want, they do. Instead, if you choose what you want, even if something goes wrong, again, you have the capacity to get back. Yeah. Now, if he starts with his feet first, so this is why we don't start with our feet first. Now my body's gotten closer to him. I'm not saying that this is a death sentence. Like, if I'm crazy fast, maybe I can grab that blade back. But either way, I'm gonna be in a less good situation. I'm gonna be in a worse position than if I just started with my hand. Because now there's more stuff I can do. Yeah, he All just right. keeps his options open. So now, really quickly, we're gonna go over some of my favorite drills to make sure your tip goes forward. Again, my brother's gonna put his stuff on. So the first one is, is, um, is he's not gonna hit me. Um, I, we're going to do a few example ones, and then I want you to try it, okay? So my hand is going to open, and keep in mind, we're going to be a little closer than you normally should, just so that we can stay in the frame of the video, and I'm holding a blade. You don't have to for the sake of this exercise, but we recommend it, because this way I can make sure my point is still on his target. So basically, I'm moving, he's following, if I start with my hand, his hand is going forward, and if I close it, it's not. If I drop my hand... Then he's gonna learn. Very good, recover. Excellent. All right, so now you guys can try. I'm gonna try to trick you, okay? Slow, nothing. Slow, nothing. Try to follow along. Slow, fast, good. Slow, slow, fast, excellent. All right, so that's something you can do. Parents, you can do this with your kids. Partner exercise. All right, guys, we uh, really enjoyed making this video. We hope you learned something. Uh, if you guys have any disagreements or anything you learn, anything you want to try, just feel free to let us know in the comments. Like, subscribe. You you've seen YouTube. Yeah, you, you, know, you know the drill. All right, catch you guys next time.